in my short introductory remarks, then I will try to uh, outline uh, not exactly how the pandemics uh, influenced Russian uh, development, but rather uh, what we can expect in the future based on the experience we uh, saw uh, in recent, uh, recent weeks, recent two or three months. Uh, when, uh, f first of all, uh, when it started, the first reaction on the official level was, uh, uh, don't worry, uh, do not overplay uh, this reaction. Uh, yes, it's a big problem, but we will manage and so on. Uh, that uh, was uh, for first, uh, the case for first maybe week or 10 days. Then it was uh, replaced by uh, the opposite uh, atmosphere. Uh, that's ex extremely dangerous. We need to do everything to stop it. Uh, President uh, spoke uh, in uh, late March to introduce very harsh measures. Uh, of uh, lockdown of basically everything, especially in Moscow. Uh, then we moved to next stage, uh, approximately mid-April. Uh, situation is dangerous, but we do everything to take it under control and we have some positive trends, but it's too early to, to judge. And finally, uh, late April, early May, uh, we arrived to the same um, uh, same discussion as everywhere else. Uh, what is worse to uh, uh, open up, uh, to start to open up li life and economy uh, and to face uh, maybe a bigger problem with the healthcare or uh, to continue uh, those strict measures uh, with the risk to uh, totally ruin economy. So at the end of the day, we still have in Moscow, especially, we still have a, a pretty total lockdown, but it seems that uh, it will uh, start to be lifted uh, maybe next week. And uh, certainly some change will come uh, starting from June the 1st. Uh, of course, uh, there is a ongoing discussion about how uh, correct official uh, data about uh, uh, cases of coronavirus and uh, uh, little cases little cases are uh, I'm not a specialist to judge uh, just an observation from a citizen and from a um, uh, person who knows approximately how the system works I don't think there are significant uh, uh, in correct, uh, significant uh, um, uh, deformations, so to say, in statistics. Uh, statistics uh, is uh, most likely slightly manipulated in order to create uh, more uh, manageable at public atmosphere. But uh, living in today's uh, transparent society, it's uh, uh, impossible to significantly alter the uh, statistics. So I think more or less what we have officially uh, corresponds to reality. Of course, there are uh, several details which can be discussed with specialists about, uh, in particular about uh, some, uh, some uh, re regions in Russia, but uh, in general, uh, we have uh, this picture of what we have, uh, which most likely is relatively close to reality. Uh, so in this regard, uh, Russia got all problems uh, similar to any other country. Uh, to what extent uh, public uh, service uh, reaction was efficient or not, uh, that can be debated. Uh, we see that uh, unlike uh, many European countries, for example, where uh, approval ratings of governments, even in countries very badly hit by, uh, by the disease, uh, are um, growing, while in Russia it's not uh, that obvious. Uh, at the same time, uh, to expect uh, some public discontent uh, connected to this situation 
I don't think it's, uh, we have reasons to expect that. Uh, the very special element of Russian situation was that uh, e exactly before the whole uh, pandemic started, uh, a Russian political system uh, entered an extremely important and uh, 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 pretty nervous process of uh, constitutional changes. And the uh, decision to amend, to finally amend constitution was uh, taken a couple of days actually before uh, the whole country went into, into the lockdown and the famous uh, session of the State Duma where uh, different uh, um, ideas were offered and President Putin ha came himself to attend and to approve or disapprove some amendments. That happened uh, approximately one week before it became clear that uh, the uh, uh, business as usual will hardly be possible in, in the foreseeable future. Uh, now, there is a, quite a general perception uh, that the whole agenda which was uh, developed and, uh, uh, implement and started to be implemented before the crisis I mean agenda with constitutional changes and a certain model of uh, power transition in Russia, uh, which we don't know exactly uh, what it was, but it was uh, certainly the, the focus of uh, President Putin's uh, 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 thinking uh, early this, uh, this year, starting from January. So now this agenda uh, needs at least to be corrected, to put it mildly, because uh, the public atmosphere changed, changed significantly. And even uh, uh, more than that, it will change uh, further after uh, the uh, severe stage of pandemic uh, will be over and uh, socioeconomic problems uh, will uh, emerge uh, connected to, to this, uh, this year's situation. So uh, for now, uh, it seems that uh, uh, many ideas are put on hold. Uh, the public vote, which was announced and was planned for April 22nd initially and then postponed uh, because of uh, coronavirus, uh, is still on the agenda and it certainly will be uh, uh, how, uh, will be held in, uh, in a pr relatively foreseeable future, although we don't have any date yet. Uh, so constitutional changes will happen, but those changes are uh, pretty flexibly and vaguely written. So um, you can interpret them uh, in a way which will suit uh, the situation which will emerge later, be it in half a year or one year from now, I don't know. Uh, just, I'm not specialist in Russian domestic policy. I can only suggest that uh, President Putin uh, uh, has now entered another round of very deep considerations about the future of the political model and uh, himself. Uh, he certainly will need to, uh, to take into account what happened uh, during uh, recent weeks and uh, calculate what kind of public atmosphere can emerge in Russia, say half a, half a year from now. As for foreign policy, foreign policy was uh, basically put on hold completely uh, when lockdown started. Uh, for quite a long time, several weeks, if not, if not longer, uh, foreign ministry was only, Russian foreign ministry was only preoccupied with uh, how to uh, evacuate Russian citizens who stuck uh, in different countries. Uh, that was not unique. Uh, many other uh, governments uh, did the same. So now, uh, of course, any uh, international contacts are very limited and uh, uh, despite uh, the fact that uh, all of us learned how to live online, uh, I don't think diplomacy yet has arrived to the stage that uh, it can uh, 
easily avoid uh, personal meetings. Maybe it will come later if the situation continues. Uh, as, for the, uh, as for the broader assessment of uh, what, uh, what can change uh, in, in the foreign policy and international relations, uh, first of all, uh, the view which is pretty spread in Russia is that uh, we cannot expect anything profoundly different in the international agenda after life will resume uh, in, say, several months, uh, uh, several months from now. Uh, there is no feeling that uh, this crisis uh, uh, changed uh, some of uh, uh, significant international trends, but as I said uh, initially, uh, it served as a very strong uh, impetus to all those trends. Uh, certainly, Russia will face the same problem as many other countries because domestic uh, implications of this uh, situation will uh, overshadow anything else. And uh, it's uh, pretty difficult to, uh, to understand uh, now uh, what amount of resources Russia will uh, have uh, for its disposal, uh, both uh, domestically and internationally, when uh, the full-scale economic crisis will come, uh, which I think is inevitable everywhere. Uh, it does not mean that foreign policy will stop, of course, but uh, some limitations uh, will be much stricter uh, than before. Uh, as it happened uh, during previous years, uh, Russian behavior will be uh, heavily influenced by the general situation in the world. So Russian foreign policy uh, since a very long time has been uh, much more uh, reactive than proactive. And even uh, some of most, uh, uh, most significant moves uh, in recent years were in fact uh, initially stimulated by some uh, steps and actions by international partners, uh, first of all, United States and the European Union. Uh, now uh, it seems that uh, international entourage and the context of international, uh, international affairs uh, will uh, have a significant impact on what Russia will be able to do internationally and uh, what Russia will be willing to do internationally. Uh, among trends which um, Russian analysts uh, um, identify for the next period, uh, the main one is uh, the growing, uh, escalating confrontation between the United States and China, which uh, uh, here is seen as uh, uh, inevitable and uh, very long-term uh, uh, long process. Uh, that puts Russia in, an, in, in, in a very uh, new position. So uh, if I would try to describe uh, the public mood here, uh, anticipating the escalating uh, trade information, economic war between uh, China and the United States, uh, you cannot find uh, a lot of uh, sympathy uh, for the United States in this battle. And uh, it would be strange to expect that Russian side uh, would uh, uh, decide to lean towards the United States after a relationship we had in uh, several years uh, before. At the sa so in this regard, uh, Russia, uh, Russian sympathies are rather on Chinese side. Having said that, I must say that the public mood is uh, pretty uh, volatile. And uh, uh, beyond, uh, besides this uh, no uh, sympathy for the United States, there is a growing discussion about limits of cooperation with China. What is almost a consensus uh, in Russian expert community, and I think that basically it is shared by most people uh, in the, on the political level, uh, this is uh, uh, the fact that Russia 
that, that the fact that this war is not ours. This is not our war. This is the war between two countries which pretend, which uh, uh, have ambitions on uh, global dominance, world dominance. And it's not what Russia is uh, interested to participate in. Uh, it does not mean uh, pure uh, sterile neutrality, of course. As I said, uh, sympathies uh, will be on the Chinese side. Secondly, of course, uh, even uh, uh, not taking sympathies into account, uh, I think that uh, uh, there is a uh, common wisdom here that uh, ha uh, when you have such a huge, powerful and important neighbor, important neighbor is China, and there is no doubt that China will remain the most important uh, international partner for Russia in years, uh, if not decades to come. It would be totally uh, uh, insane to undermine relationship with this neighbor because of uh, uh, hypothetical opportunity to improve relationship with another country. So in this regard, objectively and subjectively, we cannot expect uh, Russia to uh, be interested in some engagement with the United States in the context of Chinese-American uh, uh, competition. At the same time, uh, since this competition is not seen as something which, Russian, which uh, touches upon Russian interest directly, I think that uh, most uh, energy will be put uh, to uh, stay, stay uh, aside uh, and uh, try to avoid uh, being uh, dragged in uh, into this uh, uh, kind of new uh, Cold War uh, between uh, uh, China and the United States. Uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese situation after this crisis is uh, ambivalent. On the one hand, China uh, demonstrated a uh, very strong uh, capacity to uh, act in crisis, uh, crisis situations. Uh, and uh, that was uh, pretty esteemed in many countries, including Russia. At the same time, uh, it seems that China is now experiencing the most powerful counteraction uh, compared to what China experienced before. Now, we cannot uh, compare uh, American uh, drive against China to any uh, other period in uh, bi their bi bilateral relationship, including uh, uh, spring uh, 1989. Uh, Tiananmen massacre was uh, uh, perceived in the West very badly, but uh, uh, certainly the setup of measures uh, was not that uh, extended as this time. Uh, there is a discussion in Russia uh, about the European Union. Uh, we can uh, you can hear different views, but uh, there is a denominator uh, which is shared by most of uh, uh, more or less reasonable commentators, that European Union uh, is entering the period of profound domestic, uh, profound internal uh, transformation, uh, which was pretty inevitable before, but uh, uh, corona, corona crisis uh, just stimulated that uh, powerfully. Uh, we can, if, if you are interested, we can discuss later on in Q&A sessions uh, some details, but generally there is, a, uh, there is a view that European Union for years to come will be so much consumed by domestic affairs that uh, we cannot expect uh, any kind of uh, proactive policy uh, towards any international partners. Uh, Russia is not an exemption. Uh, same can be said about Russia itself, because uh, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, pretty important and uh, problematic, uh, by default problematic uh, transformation, which Russia started uh, earlier this year and which inevitably will continue, uh, that will uh, uh, require that the country, country's leadership will put much more significance on this process, this uh, 
uh, transition, which is by nature uh, internal. Uh, of course, it uh, inevitably will um, be accompanied by different discussions and debates uh, inside the country, including the eternal Russian discussion about uh, pro or anti-West, pro or anti-China. So this is unfortunately the extremely interesting but totally fruitless debate which we face uh, in our country since uh, approximately beginning of 19th century. Uh, with the same results all the time, no, which means no result at all. Uh, but uh, it is a profoundly domestic, domestic process. So uh, to conclude, uh, I think that uh, we can expect uh, a relatively same uh, uh, constellation of uh, foreign policy priorities and interests, but uh, all of them will be uh, damped and uh, uh, how to say it, weakened by the necessity to pay much more attention to domestic development and uh, by limitations uh, in resources which uh, will be inevitable. Uh, in this uh, regard, Russia is certainly not unique because uh, all countries, uh, including the most powerful ones like uh, China or the United States, will certainly face the same uh, framework uh, for the next period. Uh, in Russian case, uh, it might have bigger impact on uh, just uh, the nature of domestic discussion, for example, about how and which premises and which basis economy should be developed further. Uh, it can happen, but not necessarily, maybe not. So we will see, certainly the next period, uh, starting from uh, this summer, which uh, most likely will be not a very entertaining <laughs> period this time. Uh, that, that, that will give us a little bit more clarity about the trajectory of uh, future development of Russia. Uh, I think it's enough for introduction and I'm happy to respond to any questions if I can. Thank you.